Hi, this is Les Per Year, and I want to show you today how to put page numbers on your interior pages in the new Book Bolt Studio. Now, it's not as easy as it used to be. You just can't go into an interior page and say uh, page one or page two or page three or or go to the internal documents as a whole and tell it to put page numbers. It's a little bit different in the new BookBolt Studio, but it's much more flexible and you can use it in all kinds of ways in your interior pages. So I'm going to show you today on how to do it using my Sudoku puzzle book that I had shown in an earlier video. Okay, now after we have logged into BookBolt, we come up to the page that shows us the tutorials. And the tutorials are pretty good. You can look at them and see how to do certain things, like look at other books that are online and see how they're doing things and might help you with whatever low content books that you may do. And if you look on the left hand side of the new book boat, then it has the same icons that you can use to do your research. Um, so it's uh, really no different from the way that it is today. Now, if we want to do something, make a low content book, we hit the research. And then we will hit the create button. Once we have the create button, then we have the book bolt studio and we click on that, that will give us access to the interior that we want to make for this book. Now, what I have up here is the Sudoku book that I had shown you how to make in an earlier video on the new Book Bolt Studio. We're going to put page numbers on it is what we're going to do. So we have on the left, we have our puzzle number one and as you can see there is a puzzle that has not been completed on the right hand side it shows us which template is being used and the template that's being used is the one for Sudoku and you can see that uh, we have different kinds of uh, puzzles from puzzle to puzzle. Number two is different than number one and it's different than number three. I went down to 15 puzzles and then if you remember I added a page in the middle after the puzzles that says solutions and I did that by clicking on the add page button and that inserted a page in there. Now after that I have the solutions to all of the puzzles and this is the solution for the second on down all the way to number 15. Now what we're going to do, there are no page numbers on this puzzle, so now we want to add the page numbers. As you see here, there are the different templates for the interior of your book that you're going to make, and the one that we have is Sudoku, and that's the interior that we used in order to make our book, our Sudoku book. That was the interior template. Now, 
Now, in order to put page numbers onto each of the puzzles, we go to this template and it's marked page numbers. So it tells us that this is a template that we can lay on top of the other templates and it will put a page number on it. So what we do is we just go ahead and select it. And then we see all of our pages right there. We've got our 15 puzzles and then we've got our 15 solutions on it. The puzzles that we want the page numbers on, we go ahead and select. And as you can see, I'm selecting each of the puzzles that I want to put a page number on. I'm going to select it all the way to 15. Now I have my 15 puzzles selected, and these are the puzzles that I want to put the page number template on. So now if you notice that I have not selected the solutions yet, so I don't want to put any page numbers on the solutions yet because it would go 16, 17, 18, 19, and that's not what I want to do on the solutions. So I only have the page numbers selected for the first 15 pages, my puzzles. Now, after I've selected those, then I hit the next button. Then I go up to the page that I can make changes on how I want the page number to look. I usually leave the margins where they are. I can change the font. I can change the way the font looks. And if you notice at the bottom, it tells you that you are using a page number template. We can put the page numbers on the left of the page, the center of the page, or the right of the page on the bottom. Everything's on the bottom. So I select it on the right, and it's going to go on the bottom right. Now I go ahead and submit it. And you can see it working on the left-hand side. And notice up at the right-hand side, now I have another template that's being shown. Not only do I have the Sudoku template, I also have the page number template. And that's in normal order. Now, if you look down at the right-hand side, we see the page number on the page, and that is page number one. If we look at the second puzzle, we see page number two. And the same thing on the third puzzle, page number three, 
And as we scroll down all the puzzles, whenever we get down to the last puzzle, then it should say page number 15. So here we are at the last puzzle, and it does say page number 15. Now, notice I don't have a page number on the solutions page because I didn't select it to put a page number on it. Notice I don't have a page number on the first solution of the first puzzle because I didn't select it whenever I made my selections for the page number template. I'll show you why in just a minute. So this solution is the solution to the first puzzle. Now, I go back to my page number template because I want to put some numbers on my solutions. I want to make sure that the user knows which solution goes with which puzzle. So what I'll do now is I'll go and select the 15 solutions to be using the page number template. So you can see at the bottom, it's telling me that this is the page number template that we're adding onto the 15 solutions. And we go ahead and submit that. And we have the same options that we had earlier to make changes on margins, on fonts. and on the location of the page numbers. We can change the color as well on the cells. The left, center, or right location for the page number. So I picked right, and I'm going to submit that now on the 10 solutions. And if you notice now on my first solution for my first puzzle, it has a page number and this page number is number one. So it didn't continue the page numbers that I started at the beginning. It started from number one whenever I selected it the second time. Um, and it goes all the way down and all of the page numbers should go from 1 to 15 on all of the solutions. So now I have completed adding page numbers onto my puzzle. As you see on the right hand side, once more, it shows the templates that have been used and the order that they have been used. The Sudoku template was used first, and then the page number template was used second, and it was overlaying the Sudoku puzzle. So that's basically how you get your page numbers. It, the thing about it is, is that it might seem a little awkward at the beginning by having to overlay a template but it's really not. But once you get used to it, you can really be flexible in the use of your page numbers. So basically, the page numbers can be added to any of the low content interior pages that you want to use. And there are all sorts of low content pages, not only just puzzles, but um, other things that you may want to use, uh, like for notebooks or 
um, for graphs or thing like, things like that. So that's how you add page numbers onto your low content books. I hope this video has been helpful to you with understanding how to add page numbers in the new BookBolt tool.